Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. So today we are going to see how to create a very realistic fire simulation and how to create a progressive animation of this fire on an object. The tutorial will be based on the fire simulation, but if you want to have my fire color setup and learn how to create your own, as well as all the files and how to add particles and create slow motion in post-production, you can find all that on my Patreon. Okay, let's start now. Okay, so now we are into this map. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a sphere for the creation of the fire. I will use a sphere, but you can of course use the mesh you want. So, your sphere. I will go before in customize unit setup and check that I am in centimeter for symmetry and centimeter. Okay, perfect. Can okay, maybe decrease a bit the radius 10 centimeter. 50 segment. Okay, perfect. Now what I want to do is to create the gradual operation of fire. So I will go here in material, activate V-Ray, go to material, V-Ray, V-Ray material. And for the diffuse, I will use a gradient point. Switch the interpolation here to solid can apply this texture okay perfect i cannot change the gray to a perfect white so not here here perfect white okay now what we want to do is to animate this black and white map so basically the black will be no fire and the white will be fire so I will first add a UVW map. Planar, okay. Go to Gizmo and really increase the scale of the Gizmo. Okay. I can now move my Gizmo like this to create the operation of my fire. So I will go first to black. Go to maybe frame 50. And after move my gizmo to see the white you can of course if you want add a bit noise here maybe the run you can of course add a phase if you want to animate the animation of the noise so phase zero here and from the frame 50 phase to fight okay let's see Okay, it's good. You have of course different mode. It's up to you to play with this setting to create the look you want for the apparition of your fire. I will now select my sphere, go to object property and display as box. Okay, I cannot select my sphere. And I will here select the Phoenix FD setup for a fire. Okay. You have here the fire, the grid, and the turbulence. I want maybe less variation in the turbulence, so I will up a bit the size. 100, increase the strength. Okay. For the fire, I think a value of 5 for the outgoing velocity is generally good. So 5. For the temperature, I change nothing here. Okay. Let's see what we are for the moment. So we have error simulation, but the result is not really good. So I will show you how to improve that. So first, I will go here in my Phoenix FD fire. For the grid and the cell size, I always start with the value of one to have a quick simulation. I will up the extra margin to five. For the dynamics, I deactivate here massive vorticity and I will set the classic vorticity to zero because this value will be controlled here by the method, the fluidity here you can see. So for the method I stay in 
proofread and up the quality to maybe 80. Okay. For the multi pass, I change nothing. In the output, I will select velocity if you want to add motion blur and smoke if you want to create a smoke simulation with your fire. Okay, I think all is good for the moment. What I will do now is to go to rendering and I will import my own setup. Okay, so I will load, as I said, my own setup that you can find on my Patreon. But if you want, you can just go here in volumetric option and play here with the smoke color and play here with the curve. Okay, so render preset and I will load my fire setup. Okay, yes, yes, okay. This setup has already changed a lot of things. If you want to add more variation in your fryer and in your smoke here, plane force, and for the orientation of my wind, I will rotate a bit like this. Decrease the strength to maybe 50. No fade start. Okay. I cannot see how it looks like this. So I will relaunch the simulation. Okay, as you can see here, drink a bit when the fire disappears. So I will go here and select expand and don't drink. You can see the fire is not really beautiful here. So I will just go in my volumetric option and just decrease a bit the fire multiplier. Maybe five would be good like this. Okay. If you want to have more control on the size of the fire, what you can do is to go back here and play with the cooling in dynamics. So basically a low value will create a big fire and high value a small fire. If I set the view of 0 0.5, I will show you. This small fire as you can see. And a cooling of 0 0.1. Okay, perfect. A really good thing to note too is that you can play with the grid here in the scale size. And the scale size will really affect the look of your fire. If I maybe decrease the scale size to one. A very different result for the look of your fire. You can see that we don't have a big flame, but if I increase the value to maybe 20 and I relaunch the simulation you can see here a very very different result too with a big fire and big flame I really love generally to increase my scene scale to a value between 10 and 20. For me, it's the best result. Okay, so now we have the basic setup. What we want to do now is to activate the gradual operation of the fire. So I will go back here in my fire. And for the text map here, I will open my material editor and drag and drop this map in the mask slot here. Okay. What I love to do is to add again a bit noise, 0.1. I can now go back to my Phoenix Fire and decrease a bit the cell size. So 
maybe 0 0.8 I can now relaunch the simulation. And as you can see here, we have the gradual operation of the fire. It's really cool like that. really good effect okay now let's see how it looks with the render okay so first i have to set up a bit my vray setting so here vray i will go to vray gpu to render faster for the setting here i will change the adaptive light to full light evaluation mm, I think all is good like this. We now add a camera with Ctrl C. What you can do is to add the light. So I will now create a real light here like this. I can move the light just above my fire simulation. You can now relaunch your under. And we see that the smoke is really too bright, so I will now decrease a bit my light intensity. I select the light, and I will set a value of 10 maybe. Mm, 2. Okay, it's good like this. I can now set the light to invisible. If you want to adjust again the setting of your smoke, what you can do is to go back to the volumetric settings, and you can play with the curve like this here 0 0.1 looks good to me you can of course change the color of your smoke i will maybe choose a dark gray perfect what you can do is to also play with the fire color and rich player to change the look of the fire Decrease the fire multiplier here to have a different look. But I will go back to 5. What I have to do is to play with the post production inside 3 Mac to already have a result near to my final render in After Effects. You can play with the exposure, add the glow with the bloom and glare effect. You just have to decrease the threshold and up the intensity great play with the saturation to change a bit the color of your fire you have a lot of settings that you can play with to adjust the final look and to finish what you can do is to play with the gradient of your fire color to create the look you want for your fire you can add more blue if you want or a really strong orange look okay good i think it looks like this is cool in my opinion Okay, now I will show you another cool trick. So, if you want to don't see the fire at the beginning of your shape, what you can do is to go to Material, go to Maps, V-Ray, select a V-Ray Distance Texture. Here, in the V-Ray Distance Text object, you can pick your sphere, and you will now control the distance of your texture here with the distance. Usually a value of 5 and 10 is good for me. So we will stay with a value of 10. And now what I can do is to go to my fire, here activate, modulate, and link my very distant texture to the mass lot here. In instance, of course. And now let's see the difference. Better see the render of our shape and not the fire. Okay, so we have here the first look of our fire, but if you want to add more detail and more realism again, what you can do is to launch a simulation. So to do that, I will go here in simulation, activate grid resimulation here, wavelet strength to zero because it will add more 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 detail and we don't want too much detail. And I will just amplify the resolution. So 
Okay, so maybe a value between 0 0.5 and 1.5 is the best. So I will try with 0 0.7. And I will launch the simulation. Now, I will not relaunch. What I need to do before is to go to Dynamics and I can change the step per frame to 1. We don't need to set the value to 2, it's not necessary. So, I can now relaunch again. Okay. Okay, I can stop here. We'll see how it looks before. And now you can see the simulation with a lot of details. You can of course adjust the contrast and color as I showed you previously and play on the light and smoke capacity to create the look you want. Okay guys, so it's over for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. Don't forget to thumb up and to subscribe if you like my work. And you can find, as I said, a lot of bonus tutorial for this project and all the files on my Patreon. See you soon for the next tutorial, guys. Bye.